Hi, I'm Reese Horn. Uh, I'm doing this project with Amara, and we chose to do our project over ergogenic aids. Um, to understand ergogenic aids, you have to first uh, define them, and I define ergogenic aid as any, any substance or mechanical aid that improves sport performance. Um, some common ergogenic aids that we use in our day-to-day -day and don't think about, things like vitamins, minerals, um, protein powder, um, some people use creatine, and caffeine. Hello, my name is Amara. I'm working with Reese, and today I'll be discussing anabolic steroids and SARMs. So I have a few key points I would like to go over. So to start off, anabolic steroids. These are synthetic or man-made version of testosterone. So it's important to know that testosterone is the main hormone seen in males. Even though females have them, they have them at much smaller amounts compared to males. This is important in this case because Testosterone is responsible for the enhancement of muscle growth. Healthcare providers will use these steroids in patients that are suffering from like delayed puberty or muscle loss due to disease, but oftentimes steroids are abused. You see this in athletes or bodybuilders. They'll use the steroids at unsafe amounts to see large enhancement of muscles, but like in the long run, this could be detrimental to one's body bodily health. Next up, we got human growth hormone, or HGH for short. The way this works is it's just a supplement that some people will take to increase their body's natural production of HGH. Some of the benefits of it is that it will increase muscle mass, and some studies have found that it also increases fat loss as well. Some, some cons with it is that with high doses, you risk acromegaly, hypertension, and in some cases, diabetes. As far as SARMs, this stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators. So what these do, they bind with receptors causing anabolic and hypertrophic activity in both the bone and muscle. So what this leads to is more body muscle, lessening of body fat, and increased bone density. So you, a lot of times people would prefer this over steroids because this doesn't really come with all the side effects that you don't want to see in the steroids. Lastly, we have blood doping. The way blood doping is done is you take your athlete, you draw blood from them, you separate out the red blood cells, and then you reinfuse those red blood cells on competition day. So that, that way they have an elevated red blood cell count, thus an elevated oxygen carrying capacity. We use, red, we use blood doping only for elite athletes, and the reason for that is because average individuals don't have the hemoglobin to make the excess red blood cells necessary and worth it. Some of the cons of blood doping for an average individual is that it, it can cause their blood to clot. So in conclusion, when it comes to ergogenic aids and performance enhancing drugs, just be smart and use ones that can benefit you.